In this presentation, we'll look at all the different modeling techniques to create the finished model you see on the screen. We'll start by modeling one of the oak leaves and the acorn and the stem, and then looking to copy the leaf and the acorn into multiple positions, apply some scaling and rotating, and look at how it transitions into the stem before we then mirror a completed branch across to the other side for the finished design. So we're going to start by creating a new part, so file, new, and in this case it's single sided, 12 inches in X, 3 in Y, 3 quarter of an inch is thick, the Z0 will be set to the top of the machine surface, or the material surface, the XY datum will be in the center, and our modeling resolution will be set to high. Now the basis for my design is a pre-created sketch that I've done in pencil and then scanned in using a, a scanner. So I'm going to import that now onto the workpiece. So this is a JPEG that's currently not the correct scale. So I'm just going to scale that up to be the correct size. I'm going to link XY so it will scale in proportion. And our width in X will be up, updated to be 12. So with that, I'm happy with the size. But of course, I should now go ahead and start creating some vectors over the top. But given the time constraints, I've actually already pre-created some vectors, which I will then import over the top. So I've got import vectors. So I'm going to select the oak leaves vectors.eps file. And we can see that um, when I zoom in, I've created basically the vector that forms the stem. And I've got the two vectors that form the leaf and then the group of vectors that forms the acorn. So we are going to model this all up, but actually given the fact that I want to ensure uh, the highest level of accuracy, I'm actually going to create uh, two separate models that will be used to create the models for both the leaf and the acorn. So before I do that, I really need to decide on the size of those models. So to do that, I'm just going to select the perimeter vector that denotes the leaf. And you can see in the bottom right hand corner that the width is 1.35 inches by 1.29 inches. So an ideal situation would probably create a part round about the 2 inches by 2 inches. So with that now, I'm going to shift and pick the vein, the central vector. I'm going to right mouse key and copy that and go across and create a new session of Aspire and I create a new file. All the parameters will be the same for the job apart from the X and Y. So that will be set to 2 in X and 2 in Y and just OK that. Go into the 2D view, right mouse key and paste. Now currently uh, the vectors are not in the correct position because they've been imported uh, with respect to the, where the datum was from the part that it was copied from. So I now need to center that on this particular workpiece. So I'm going to go to the Align Selected Objects and pick the Aligned Material Center. And that's exactly where we need in the center of the workpiece. So we now need to look at how we're going to model this leaf. And essentially it really forms three different stages. First is to create the underlying shape, in which case we will actually use a two rail sweep command here. So I'll need to create some vectors for the two rails and the cross section. That will then be trimmed back to this external vector that I've selected. And then we'll use that same vector to create a sort of undulating shape. And then following that, we'll then use the central vein and use a quite a, a nice rounded profile to create that central vein on the top of the leaf. So first things first, I need to go across and start creating some polyline geometry, which will donate the two rails for use with the two rail sweep. So I'm just going to sketch around the outside now and now hit the space bar to come basically out of the command. And then I'm going to go back to the bottom of the stem now and just sketch around the outside again. And we're now back round to the tip of the leaf and close out. I need to smooth each of those vectors. So I've selected now and I'll use N on the keyboard to go into the node editing mode and then hover over the node that I want to smooth and right mouse key and select smooth point. And I can do the same for all the other points on that curve or on that vector. And I'm just gonna edit the tangency into that final point. So I'm happy there, a little bit of tweaking at the start. Select the second of the two vectors and similarly, I need to smooth the points, but I'm going to use S on the keyboard, which will do the same as the right as the uh, as the menu command. So S, S, S on the keyboard, 
and then finally just the tangency into the last point and just maybe move a little bit of manipulation in the actual key points so I'm happy with the two rails there I now have to consider the cross section that I'm going to be using with these two rails so I'm going to use the uh, uh, create ellipse command and I'm just going to use the dynamic sizing so I'm just going to pick a point here and just basically scale that up and you can see that it's currently 0.85 by 0.2 and I need to go to roughly about 0.1 by about 0.3 okay so when I'm happy there that's fine close out the form I do not need the whole of the profile just the upper part so I'm going to go straight into the node editing mode with N on the keyboard and I'm going to hover in between these two points on the span and just delete the span and delete the span the other side which I could have done with D on the keyboard as well and now I have my cross section and my two rails so I can start doing some modeling so first of all I'm going to pick the first vector okay and then the second vector go into the modeling menu and select the two rail sweep I've already got the two rails selected so I can great to straight to use selection I've got to make sure that the arrows are going in the same direction which they are I can now move across and select the cross section and this is going to be called leaf one so leaf one I'll leave all the parameters the same and apply now I'm just going to tie all the windows vertically so we can see the finished effect there and I'm happy in the most part but I could do with a really a bit of a better wave throughout this uh, leaf shape it's a little bit sort of boring in just a straight sort of concave shape so I'm going to go now into the vector itself okay and and now I've clicked on that sort of cross-section vector I'm going to hit N on the keyboard to go into node editing mode and I'm just going to change the tangency through that point so once I've done that now I can then reapply and you can see we've got a much better shape there okay now with that I think I'm reasonably happy okay and I'm going to close out that form and then we need to look at limiting the 3D back to the 2D vector so I've selected the 3D model I'm going to shift and pick the outer boundary of the leaf and use the clear area of selected component outside selected vector so it's going to trim off everything outside my selected vector okay and then we've got the base shape for our leaf following that I now need to maybe add some contour on top of that so this is the next stage you're going to create another component so I've still got that vector selected I'm going to go back up to the modeling tools the create shape command I'm going to use the rounded profile okay but rather than adding I'm actually going to create a slightly more dished shape so I'm going to go rid you can see that as soon as I move the uh, the dynamic arrow it's applied that so I'm actually going to go minus 30 here and we don't need a base height and we're just going to call that leaf 2 leaf 2 and that will be added basically into it and then so I'm happy now that we've got that sort of slightly sort of dish shape you can see here the waves that are are going into that leaf so we've got a little bit more realistic before we then think about adding the vein on top so I'm going to start another new component now and pick the vein now for the vein we want quite a nice pronounced raised profile so um, I'm going to go for something round about the sort of possibly 50 degree mark and apply that and this is going to be called the leaf 3 so I'm quite happy there that we've got something that we need to apply some smoothing to this so I'm just going to close out that form now so we can see here that we've got three constituent components that form that leaf but collectively in order to make that look a little bit more realistic and organic I want to apply a smooth over the whole model so I'm going to select those three items from the menu there now so they're all highlighted come up to the smooth apply smoothing to selected components that will warn me now that it's going to bake that all into one item which I'm fine with so I'm going to OK on that and then we can think about how much we want to smooth it so you can see here that if I minimize it we get less smoothing and if I increase it we get far more smoothing so I'm actually going to read that round about the sort of 45% I 
think is how I'm happy with there and I'm going to OK that. So at that particular point I'm happy with my leaf and what I want to do now is to just change the rename it from the menu here before I save the parts. This is going to be called leaf and I'm going to just file save as and that is going to be called the oak leaf model there and then following that I really need to try and I now got to bring that back from this workpiece into our master workpiece where we started so I'm going to simply select the model right mouse key and copy and now I'm just going to come back into that original and right mouse key paste now you can see here that it's not in the correct position obviously we've got different size work pieces etc so I now need to possibly how can I actually move that into the correct place well the best way to do it is to align it to a vector and as it stands we have that vector that we are perfect fit so I'm going to shift and pick that vector go into the align selected vectors and now it's just a case of picking the right item in which case I want to align to the selection I want to align to its center and then it's in the correct location I now need to look at how to create the model for the acorn. So just like the oak leaf, I'm going to have a look at the actual size of the model. So I'm just going to select two of the vectors. This will give me an approximate size of 0.87 inches width and just over one inch height. So I'm going to need to create a new part that's roughly around about sort of one inch by one and a half inches. So I'm just going to take those vectors now and copy those and then start a new session of Aspire create the new file which will be in this case 1 inch by 1.5 all other parameters will be set the same and I'm going to write mouse key and paste those items into it now you may think that actually nothing's happened there but it's because it's off the size of the workpiece based upon the position of those items from the datum in the original workpiece so now I'm just going to move those into the correct place by using the align selected objects and I'm just going to put them straight in the middle of the workpiece so the next stage is to think about how we're going to build this up as a model. So it's going to be once again done in a number of different stages. We're going to have the shell and the shell is going to be created by using this particular profile, applying a rounded shape, but then limiting it to this vector here. So we get a nice rounded shape with a sheer vertical surface. And then we're going to take this boundary here, which will form the main acorn shape and that will be merged into that shell so we get a nice rounded shape with the what looks like a shell on the end of the acorn we're then going to take the stalk here and merge that in with the basically the shell and then finally the sort of detail parts these sort of vectors on the top will apply an undulating shape so we get that nice sort of crisscross detail on the actual shell so the first thing to do is to create the shape for the shell so we're going to go into the modeling techniques and go up to the shape modeling um, we're going to use a rounded profile in this case 60 degrees okay and just apply that this is going to be called the um, shell and round and just apply that so if we have a look now by tiling uh, vertically you can see that shape there um, but of course that's been created over size here uh, such that we can then limit that back to the vector that will actually form the basis for that shell so I'm going to just close out that form temporarily select the model then shift and pick the vector which I want to limit that to and I'm going to come back up now to the clear area of selected component outside so basically it's going to trim away the item outside of that vector so that gives us that nice rounded shape but of course that nice sheer vertical surface on this side of which the acorn will then sort of merge into so with that now I'm going to move across to that acorn vector come back into the create shape apply the same 60 degree change the name to acorn and merge that into the original sort of shell that we have there and apply so there you can see we've got that nice shape that we're looking for so it's starting to build nicely now I'm going to go straight ahead and start another new component and we're going to select the stalk that we have on the back there uh, similarly I want to select merge rather than add and I'm going to go for something a little steeper here so 70 degrees and just we're going to call that the stalk and 
apply that so we've got now the stalk basically merging into the base of the shell very nicely and then finally I'm going to start another new component which will be these uh, basically detailed components which is the crisscross that will really give the uh, a sense of reality to the acorn and I'm just going to use a negative say about 40 let's go 50 degrees and see what we get there roughly and we're going to basically add that in so we're going to add a negative shape into the acorn so I'm pleased there with that now so that's starting to come together nicely it's still a little bit what I would call clinical looking and we need to maybe smooth and make that look a little bit more organic so I'm just going to call that detail on there and apply and close that out so we've got those four components that basically form the acorn now but before I think about saving that and then copying it across into the, uh, into the master part I really need to apply some smoothing to make that look a little bit more realistic so I'm going to select those four items and then come back up to the sm apply smoothing it's going to warm with that, it's going to bake that into a single component but once again I'm okay with that and then we can look to apply a smoothing filter so once again if I minimize that we get less smoothing but I'm going to go somewhere around about the 45 percent mark so I'm happy and I'll okay that just going to change the name now to I'll rename that to be acorn before I save the model so that's acorn and I'm now going to save that as the acorn model and I can now go back into my original master part and we can look at now bringing that in so in the previous example we copied the 3d model and pasted it here we're going to actually use the import 3d model so from the modeling menu import component and I'm going to pick that acorn model now and that immediately comes in and once again you can see it's not in the correct place and because we don't have a single external vector for the acorn it's very difficult for me to just hit one single button to centralize it but we still have tools that we can use to get it into the correct location. So I'm going to select the vector that forms the acorn part and then come into the align uh, selected objects and think about how we can move that into position. So um, I, now I need to just select, OK, I want to move it and align to the left edge. OK, so that's taking the 3D model and aligning to the left edge of the selected vector. And now I want to align it to the bottom of the selected vector. And so at that point, I can close out that form. And now we've got two of the three key components already modeled. OK, so I'm just going to rename that now to be Acorn. So now we need to go to the third, which will be the stem or the branch and look about how we're going to model that. So with that, I'm just going to go to the a, a basically a tiled horizontal view. And we're just going to zoom in a little bit more closely around that area and similarly on the 2D view as well. OK, so I'm going to select the external vector that will form that branch and look to apply a shape. So we're going to go to rounded shape again and I'm going to apply say 60 degrees and we'll just take a look at that now so positive 60 degrees and apply that now immediately we've got a problem because you can see it's adding into here so I'm just going to change that to merge so I'm sort of quite happy with that at this stage maybe that's a little bit too severe so maybe 50 on that but once again, it just seems to not really lift out off the page. So we could have really a good way of, of making something a little bit more prominent and giving it a little bit more um, prominence from the page is to apply a base height. So I'm going to apply a base height of just 30 thou here and just apply that. And it just lifts out, just bounces out the page a little nicer and gives it a bit more prominence. I'm going to get, change the name now to, I'm going to call this a branch. OK, and apply and then we can close that out there so at that point we now have the, the three key elements we've got the branch itself and then we've got the leaf and the acorn the next stage is to start to build the full branch by copying the leaf and the acorn into multiple locations so let's maximize the 2d view now okay and we can see the underlying image where I need to obviously copy those items to so I'm just simply going to select the two items which is the leaf and the acorn 
and then using the copy command, so I'm going to hold the control key down on the keyboard and then the alt key, so I just need to select it again first so it goes into transform roll mode, hold the control key down but then I'm going to use the alt key now the alt key will allow me to move that or move the mouse in confidence that the parts are going to move parallel in X they're not going to deviate in Y at all so I'm going to hold the alt key down and then hold the left mouse key down and move that now and it's only moving in X it's not moving in Y so I can just move that across into position so I'm happy with that at that particular point there and then moving across now and now I need to think about this final leaf that we have at the end so I need to move don't need to copy both items just one so I'm just really going to go into the transform mode control key and the alt key so it's going to copy and then only run parallel to the X or Y and I can copy that across into the relevant location so I'm happy there and then finally I'm going to look at really how to create this end leaf here so I'm just going to copy this I'm not going to hold the alt key down because I want to be able to move this anywhere I like so I'm just going to dump this here at the end here and I'm going to deal with its orientation at a later point so I have our five our three leaves and two acorns here that I de ideally need to mirror to the other side of the branch so I'm going to select those five items now and then go into the mirror mode OK, from the menu, I'm going to create a mirrored copy and I'm not going to create a flip around job center. I'm just going to flip vertical now and that will remain selected. So that's currently selected and I'm just going to hold the alt key down on the keyboard and then use my left mouse key and then move the mouse. So I'm going to hold that holding the left mouse key down and moving the mouse upwards. I'm just going to put those roughly into the right location and then let go. OK. So, if I then look at the 3D view, you can see that we've got those components, but clearly we can see that everything on there is not in the, not centered around the workpiece. So I'm just going to close that now, and I'm going to select all those items there and just align those now within the workpiece. But I don't need to move them centrally, but just down so they're on the on the center line itself. So I'm just going to put those items down there and now we can see that everything appears to be in the correct uh, position although I do need to individually start moving and manipulating some of those leaves so first of all let's start looking at the top row here so I'm gonna look down in Z and then start zooming in and we're gonna just double click on one of those leaves there and I click again to go into the transform mode and then I can just start moving that around so I'm going to move that and then I'm going to scale it so we can just move the scale I'm going to rotate it around once again move it and I'm happy with that come across double click to reset it and then select again into the transform mode I need to change the size of this acorn move it down a little rotate as well so this is sort of a repetitive uh, type process but it's important for you to sort of understand how it works and to get used to the tool so I'm just going to move this particular one out of the way a little bit so I can take a good look at this particular leaf on the top I'm going to change the scale rotate it around and move it in I'm happy there cross to the next acorn a little bit too big so I'm going to move that down and apply some rotation there and then on to the next leaf once again I'm just going to move this leaf out of the way a little bit so I can concentrate on the top leaf and rotate it and then I'm just going to change the scale a little bit okay and then down to the bottom set of leaves and acorns and once again just going to rotate that round and change the scale a little bit the acorn there is sort of okay but I could just do with moving it a little bit okay and maybe change the scale a little okay and then the leaf next to it once again a little bit of a scale change and a rotate move that out and then the next acorn which I'm pretty happy with. I'm just going to move that in and then finally this end leaf here change the scale a little 
apply a decent amount of rotation to this one I think I'm going to need to move it out quite a long way and I think that's almost okay and just apply a little bit more scaling there and a bit more rotate okay so at that point I'm quite happy with our four acons and six lease but I really need to start dealing with how to manipulate this end one here okay so we're going to start by obviously double clicking go into the transform mode and see how far we can get to what we want by rotating it so I'm going to rotate it I'm going to need to scale that a bit as well because it's a bit too big and then move it around and try scaling rotating it a little bit more but of course you can immediately see here that I can't really get a good blend of the actual leaf itself onto the branch stem so I've really got to look at a different technique of just standard scaling and rotating I actually really need to apply some sort of deformation to the leaf itself and the best way of doing that is use the distort tools so I'm just going to go into a, a tile windows horizontally so we can see the 2d view and 3d view together and I've just going to take the vectors that we've got there and because we moved the part I'm just going to take those vectors they're just going to switch off the model for the minute and just take those vectors and right mouse key move to layer and then I'm going to create a new layer and this is going to be called vectors and I'm just going to make that invisible and th the layer is not active so we've got rid of those and we can switch back on the model now so I'm going to take that item there and really look at how we can distort it so it can sort of fade better into the branch stem so with this now I'm going to go into the distort selected objects tool and use the bounding box but you can immediately see that the bounding box is way larger than its current orientation and that's because it remembers the orientation that we first used when we created the item irrespective of the fact that we've rotated it so what we really need to do now is to to convert that and make the bounding box limited to what we can see on the screen so I'm gonna do that by saying bake distortion now okay and that will allow us now to reselect it and go back into the bounding box and apply and you can see now that the bounding box represents the extents of the model as we see it on the screen so what I could do is just obviously move the node there but it doesn't give me enough control so I'm gonna just um, undo that and remove the node and I'm going to actually create the two spans either side into bezier so once again just right mouse key over the span bezier now I can start to apply some distortion so if I want to straighten this out so it runs a little bit more parallel I can start to tweak this down and tweak this one down and we can already start to see now that we're getting a change to that okay and once again here I need I'm going to distort that down and maybe distort this up a little bit okay so we can see that we're now sort of changing the the whole orientation and shape of that leaf and we can see it now in the 3d at the bottom so with that I'm now going to just close that now I'm happy with that it needs a little bit of moving so I'm just going to close that now and then basically just move that now into a bit of a better position so I'm actually doing that in the 3d view here okay so I'm actually pretty pleased with that at this stage okay so we can see that we've got quite a nice now we need to start looking at really adding a little bit more realism to it by the nature of how each of these leaves and acorns transition into the main branch stem okay so let's maximize the 3d view now and start taking a closer look at how we can transition the leaves and acorns sort of into the stem uh, to make it look a bit more realistic because at the moment all the leaves are transitioning in basically at the base of the stem uh, rather than the fact that actually they you know leaves do sprout from the stem at different heights so we can start to look to apply some sort of tilt really to tilt the leaf up um, at the sort of stem at the stem end so that it transitions in with the branch a little nicer so if we just double click on that to select it and then we can just double click on it or click on it once again to bring this up and then we've got the ability to 
basically pop open a form now which will allow us to tilt that item so we're going to apply a tilt and now I'm going to hit the set command on the form so this is setting the orientation so I'm going to sort of tilt it from here to here and then we're going to start to basically increase it you can see now if I actually increase this quite radically the end is has popped up out of the uh, branch itself so actually we just need to just tilt that down a little bit so that it's actually going to transition in okay and then probably down to about I would say about one degree and close that so that just transitions in just about there we probably need to that's probably a little bit too high so I just need to come back in and maybe make that 0.5 okay and that's fine on that one this one here as well double click click on it again pop open the tilt form tilt set the tilt from this end to this end apply say 0.5 again and close that down so that just brings the tip of it up so it's transitioning at a different height to the one on the other side we could do the same on the other side here double click click and then basically pop the um the tilt form up and set that I'm going to tilt it from this side to basically this end here and apply a tilt of say half a degree again maybe actually I might go three quarters of a degree here and close that and you can see that now just sort of pops out and that's coming out a little bit more high uh, higher on the stem this we could do the same on the bottom one here this is a bit 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 low so pop that up and I'm just going to say apply a tilt from this end to that end and apply maybe about 0.35 and close that so just lifts that up maybe actually go to 0.5 okay and maybe 0.6 okay so we're just getting a little nicer transition of that item into the stem and now we need to look at really applying some smoothing okay now we could look to essentially take all these items which I'm going to do now and we're going to create say a new level uh, create a new level and this is going to be called rename that as say finished model and this is going to be called the original one would be called um, branch parts let's call it branch parts so what we can do is select that new finish model um, level and then come up to the here it says create component from visible model so that's going to take all those individual components that we've got on that previous level and just create one component under the new level which you can see there so I can basically switch off that and you can see that model there now what I can go up to is then try and smooth that as a whole but of course you can see it by the nature of us smoothing the some of the key areas like the transitions of the leaves into the branch we actually cause a lot of smoothing in areas where we'd like to keep some very crisp definition so I don't think that uh, a, a, a smoothing over the whole model really works in this case so now we're going to look at really how we can locally sculpt certain areas where in particular where those leaves transition into the stem so I'm going to select the model and come up to the smoothing so before that I just want to just basically be in roughly the right location there so I can start to smooth and go smooth and you can see the size of my cursor there so I'm just going to reduce that down um, and just see what we get there so I'm going to start smoothing this now you can see that's quite strong so probably my strength needs to be down a little bit okay and just we just transition that in similarly here and likewise okay and once again on this one here as well okay so I'm sort of happy with that there maybe on these acorns as well okay and now I'm just going to move the view across so I can apply a bit more smoothing in other areas so back to the smooth command and 
just move that in either side and similarly with our last branch there okay so I'm going to OK that to keep that so keep the changes and OK that and just zoom out and we can see that we've got a lot more of our sort of organic flow of those leaves into that stem or branch the next stage is really to look at how we can create a little bit more of a snapped off branch look at the end of this branch stem currently it's just sort of tapering out so we're going to go back in and select the model from the component tree up back up to the interactive smoothing and in, rather than using the smooth command we're actually going to use the smudge so I'm just going to increase the diameter up to round about 60 but sort of decrease the strength down to say 35 and I'm just going to start now initially sort of pushing this up okay so it's going to start to trans and then move it across okay so we'll start to see this form and then start going down okay so if we then keep that and okay that and then we just start to zoom out you can see there that it's got a little bit more of a slightly more sort of snapped off look um, and now we're in a position now to mirror that across in confidence that it's going to look okay so with that I'm now going to select the model that I do want to mirror across and come back up to the mirror selected objects uh, we do want to create a mirrored copy we want to create it around the job center and we want to flip horizontally across to the other side now initially you can immediately see that we've got a, an issue where the two branches overlap so I'm going to close out of that now we have those two models uh, the new one's selected so I'm going to right mouse key combine mode change that from add to merge so that now sorts out the the overlap issue uh, where it was adding in that area but of course we don't get the situation typically one branch lays on top of the other so what I need to do now is to apply a tilt to that so I'm just going to whilst that's selected one further click will bring up the transform mode I can then click on the sort of blue square at the bottom there to bring up the ability to be able to tilt the model so I'm going to select tilt I'm going to set the axis so I'm going to tilt it from the tip to its base i.e. lift the base up and only a very small amount is required so let's say 0.2 degrees and just tab that to see the effect and you can see that's applied quite a nice sort of lift above that I'm I'm happy with that maybe a little bit more maybe 0.25 let's have a look um, um, maybe up to 0.3 in fact yes so I'm happy with that now you can get that idea that one's laying on top of the other so I can close that out now and we can start to see that we have almost a finished design okay so just before I save the part just going to do a little bit of tidying so I'm just going to right mouse key rename this and this is going to be called right branch and we'll change the other one to be left branch so I'm happy there I've got my constituent parts which I can call on if I'm required so at this point I can go to file save as and save it as my completed model and now the design is finished <laughs>